I must say I'm very happy to introduce you because it was such a challenge to get you here. Elena Kostyushenko. Elena Kostyushenko is a Russian journalist, author and gay rights activist. She's an investigative reporter for the newspaper Novaya Gazeta. Novaya Gazeta um, received the Nobel Prize for Peace last year. She won the 2013 Frit Art, Free Word, Prize in Norway. She was a speaker at the 2015 Oslo Freedom Forum, and she was awarded with the Distinguished Writing Award by the European Press Prize. She recently covered the war in Ukraine, and this explains why I started my introduction this way. Hello, thank you so much for coming. Um, here I write a book, it will be called My Beloved Country. Uh, so I will read um, one chapter, I guess. It's a small one, it's also about my brother. I was at a friend's house when my mother called me and told me she couldn't reach Vanya. Vanya was my adopted younger brother. I didn't want to leave. It was summer night. I was being listened to and loved. I already drank half a bottle of wine. I don't remember what I told her, but I know, but I know my tone was languid. I still went. It was getting light out. I was riding in the taxi and calling the police. We flew from Moscow from the groomed historic center to the overgrowth of high rises on the outskirts. I was shocked at all the trees out there. They were huge, rising up to very top floors. Vanya lived between Yaroslavl and Kostroma. He worked uh, who the fuck knows there. My sister said that for a while he'd been sleeping with men for money. They traded apartments for the May holidays. My sister went to Yaroslav and he went to the apartment she'd been renting in Moscow and invited his friends. I went up to the stairwell. Police crowded the doorway. They were waiting for the first responders to open the apartment. The first responders arrived and said they wouldn't break the door down. The apartment owner needed to be present. The owner was an old man who lived in his dacha. We didn't have his phone number. I told them, my brother isn't there. If you don't open the door and something happens to him, I'll put you all in prison for negligence. Of course, I didn't really believe that anything could have happened to him. But I liked feeling strong, adult and capable of scaring cops and first responders. The men were silent. Two of Vanya's drunk friends were hanging around saying bullshit. They were both a lot of older than Vanya. They'd gone out for a booth and couldn't get back in. One of them left his back in the air and he kept whining about it. The first responder went downstairs, survived, uh, surveyed the building from the outside and said that he could try to get in through the balcony. The neighbors let him go through their apartment. A few minutes passed. The lock creaked. The, f the first responder came out, looked past me into the stairwell, and said, Relatives. I went in. Vanya lay on the couch. He was very hard. His face was blue-green. Next to him there was a plastic bag, a knife, and a container of Bhutan. His grandmother refused to come, but she demanded that uh, he be buried in her village. We decided to bury him in Moscow. I thought, now I'll have a grave. We put a lot of makeup on him for the funeral. He was unrecognizable. The bones stuck out of his face. His fair was slicked back. He looked like an opera singer, said Mama. His cousin came. She had the same face as Vanya, same eyes. She'd also grown up in an orphanage. I never knew he had a sister. He didn't understand fractions. He didn't know how to tell time on a clock. 
He was good at doing impressions of people's voices. In school, he got to be an English, even though he didn't know a world. He could just always repeat exactly what the teacher said. He also knew how to sing songs in foreign languages. He loved to dance. Mama would say, my first grandchild is going to come from my son, not you girls. The coffin, wo the coffin was all white inside. <coughs> they stuck a piece of paper with a prayer on, on it to his forehead. His friends came to me and told me that Vanya had been a serial sorcerer. They gave me his handwritten book of spells. There weren't many. I saw his handwriting for the first time. It looked like a child's. Letters of various size crowding each other. I went up to the coffin and laid the book at his feet. There was supposed to be a bag of blessed dirt somewhere in there. I kept thinking, I'm such an adult now, I'm such an adult now. When I had to fill out all these documents, and when I even, I even ran out of documents to fill out, and I was left without a brother. I never visited his grave again, I simply couldn't. His photos are in an old computer. He looks so young, sitting there with a beer, smiling calmly, looking straight ahead. My sister made a video, a slideshow to the song, and you betray me too. My sister is also adopted. Before that, we hardly talked. She drank a lot, she stole, she lied, she ran away from home, she pushed everyone who wanted to be close to her away. I didn't believe that she was planning on surviving. At Vanya's funeral, she stood there with her face swollen from crying, a giant round head. Her neck couldn't support that head, and Sveta kept on nodding. She threw dirt into the, on, the, on the coffin, then stuck her dirty fingers into her mouth like a child. She stopped drinking and wondering. She went to study law and became a photographer. Now she's a smart adult woman with too much composure and too much sorrow. As it turned out, Vanya had saved her life. Thank you.